Tour 25th anniversary marked the last standard Pro Tour that's gonna have Kaladesh in it, and uh, <laughs> oh boy. Standard's been a wild ride the entire time Kaladesh block has been legal. You see, the two set blocks were originally intended to rotate out of standard once a year, but true to how the internet typically works, people freaked out about it without really thinking it through or even positing an alternative. So, soon thereafter, Wizards walked this back a bit and created a standard rotation we know now, where blocks are bound to each other, and when the oldest set in the block rotates, so do the rest. For example, Amonkhet block is bound to Kaladesh block, so when Guilds of Ravnica drops in October, Amonkhet and Hour of Devastation will rotate out of standard along with Kaladesh and Aether Revolt. What I'm getting at is that Kaladesh has been in standard a long, long time, and its time in standard has dovetailed nicely with, uh, a bunch of standard bans. When Kaladesh hit, two nuisances rotated out of standard, Collected Company and Jace Friends Prodigy, but a ton of broken cards came with it. It was after the dust settled at Pro Tour Kaladesh that, for the first time since Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic, cards got banned in standard. Reflector Mage, Emrakul the Promised End, and Smuggler's Copter all joined the ban list last January, and in a somber column simply titled Standard, Sam Stoddard outlined a new policy towards banning cards. Stuff like Jace, Talarian Academy, and Skullclamp would no longer be the power level bar a card needed to clear in order to be banned, and with that, the floodgates officially opened. Part of Kieran steps seamlessly into the role Smuggler's Copter previously occupied in Mardu vehicles. The deck put six players into the top eight of Pro Tour Aether Revolt, and it won the tournament. By the time April rolled around, it was clear that there were only two realistic standard deck choices. Mardu vehicles and a combo deck that took advantage of the abundant mana fixing energy had to offer by nestling the Sahili Rai Felidar Guardian combo inside a Teamer Energy mid-range deck. Here's how the combo works, in case you didn't know. You have a Sahili Rai and a Felidar Guardian. Activate Sahili Rai's minus two ability targeting Felidar Guardian. You get an artifact copy of Felidar Guardian and it enters the battlefield ability goes on the stack. Target Sahili Rai with it. Sahili Rai re-enters the battlefield and now it can be activated again and you're right back where you started. Do this 50 million more times. Oh yeah, and all those 1-4s you're making, they all have haste, so once you're good and ready, go ahead and attack with those. Yeah, Standard had a two-card infinite combo and it was efficient enough to be tournament viable. No one really played it at the Pro Tour, but by the time Standard GPs rolled around, the cat combo decks got really, really good. Be that as it may, in our year of the Lord 2017 on April 24th, Senior Design Director Aaron Forsyth announced no bans in Standard. As you can probably imagine, people freaked out because no one wants to be told that Splinter Twin combo is too good for modern, but perfectly okay for Standard. Now that was on a Monday. Now Thursday rolls around. Aaron Forsyth's got a new article on the Mothership and it's an addendum. Felt our Guardian's banned now. The logic, as Forsyth stated it, was that three days worth of Magic Online data with Amonkhet in the mix was enough evidence that Amonkhet couldn't do anything about the combo, so they banned it. To date, the only people who bought this narrative are people that fall for pyramid schemes and or communicate exclusively in names. All right, Pro Tour Amonkhet. The top eight was made up of four Etherworks Marvel decks, three zombie decks, and a Winding Constrictor deck. Zombies won the tournament in the hands of Jerry Thompson, and in the most baller move the Pro Tour has ever seen, he eBayed his trophy and donated the money to Planned Parenthood. Jerry Thompson, you are my hero. And I say that with the full knowledge that if you knew this, you'd scoff and tell me to go find a better hero. I don't care. You're great. After Pro Tour Amonkhet, zombies fell out of favor almost immediately, and Etherworks Marvel started dominating. The idea behind Etherworks Marvel is pretty cool. You make a bunch of energy, you play this artifact, and then you just spin the wheel. It's aggressively costed all over the place. Four mana is pretty cheap, six energy is essentially nothing when your deck is full of really good cards that incidentally create energy. And in a weird twist, Aetherworks Marvel lets you cast the card it hits, ostensibly, in order to work with Eldrazi and their cast triggers. It worked! What started out as a cool idea suffered some real diminishing returns. The sequence of play fourth land, cast Aetherworks Marvel, activate it, hit Ulamog, exile your best two permanents, you're dead, is cool once or twice, but once that play pattern becomes the entire format, it sucks. Aaron Forsyth echoed this sentiment in June, when he announced that Aetherworks Marvel was getting banned. The deck wasn't particularly strong, it didn't have very good percentages, but the repetitive play pattern was not very fun, so no one was really sad to see it go. Aetherworks Marvel, along with Emrakul, Smuggler's Copter, and a couple other cards we'll get to, are a symptom of a newish design mentality. All right, so I started playing Magic in 2000. Invasion was my first ever pre-release, and that block is home to a lot of the game's iconic characters. Gerard, Tongarth, Hannah, Ertai, and a slew of other central characters were all accounted for, and the cards were all unplayable. And on it went. If a card depicted an important character in the story, it was probably terrible. At some point, someone, probably in marketing, went, hey, we shouldn't use our marquee characters and mechanics as red herrings, let's actually make them good. Vehicles was a new card type in Kaladesh, and the ratcheted power level of Smuggler's Copter ensured that Magic's new card type would see some play. The same logic applies to Aetherworks Marvel. To make sure our new resource sees play, let's build a really good cannon that spits out Aldrazi monsters. 
However, that assessment still operates under the assumption that energy cards aren't worth playing without Etherworks Marvel. We'll get to whether or not that's accurate in a minute. You probably already know how this ends, but just stick with me. Okay, next up is Pro Tour Hour of Devastation in July. Mono Red dominates the tournament thanks to newcomers Earthshaker Kenra and Ramanap Ruins. The entire cycle of Ammon Kep Block Gods are the epitome of design pushing for iconic characters to be well represented on cardboard, but they clearly flew a little too close to the sun with Hazoret and the Scarab God. These two cards are about as fun as a root canal. The top eight contained four red decks and the story of the tournament was all about which teams were able to figure out how closely win expectancy was linked to whether or not they drew a Hazoret. Fun. Pro Tour Ixalan rolled around in November. Seth Manfield won the tournament with a Sultai Energy deck, one of the four energy decks in the top eight. Pro Tour Ixalan's probably the most diverse top eight we've had so far, but Standard eventually crystallized into a world where Teamer Energy, sometimes splashing for the Scarab Gods, sometimes not, just beat the crap out of everything else. New resources are tough to develop properly because there's rarely a frame of reference for them. In the case of energy, it's clear that the design philosophy veered away from conservative, because all these cards are fine on rate without the energy aspect. World of Virtuoso and Rogue Refiner in particular, a 2-3 that comes with a 1-1 flyer and a 3-2 cantrip respectively, stand out as cards that maybe could have seen standard play without their energy aspect, but once energy was part of the equation, the cards were too powerful to be denied. Eventually, the Teamer Energy deck cut Long Tusk Cub entirely so that all of its threats could be two for ones. It was a wild time. All right, nothing beats a Takesies Baxies aspect of the Felidar Guardian ban in terms of pure absurdity, but January's ban announcement comes close. Attune with Ether, Rogue Refiner, Ramanap Ruin, and Rampaging Ferocidon were all banned. Look, the energy cards, sure, whatever, ban them, it's fine. Everything that does energy stuff is too good, so you have to cut out more cards and then cut your losses, I get it. But on the other hand, I can't imagine what I would have thought if someone had walked up to 11-year-old me at the Apocalypse pre-release and grabbed a lay of the land out of my sealed pole and told me, hey, guess what? This card's gonna be banned in standard in 17 years. That's pretty wild to think about. Ramanap Ruins is a really good card, sure, but just just ban Hazoret! You already banned so many mythics, what's one more? Ramanap Ruins and Rampaging Ferocidon died for the sins of Hazoret, and you're never gonna convince me otherwise. Rampaging Ferocidon, that's a real baffling choice. I mean, at the time of the ban, it was confusing, but in hindsight, it's even dumber because of Goblin Chain Whirler. The claim to banning Rampaging Ferocidon is that it nullifies a lot of the traditional counterplay to red, which Goblin Chain Whirler also does while also having an immediate impact on the board. Also, how many Rampaging Ferocidons would we really see alongside Goblin Chain Whirler? It's just, just ban Hazoret. Pro Tour Rivals of Ixalan was modern, so we're skipping that, but Hazoret also dominated Pro Tour Dominaria, thanks to the aforementioned Goblin Chain Whirler. But if we're being honest, Hazoret really did most of the work. It's a messed up card. Speaking of messed up cards, here's one that's gonna have some weird ripple effects in the coming months. Nexus of Fate. We made a video about Nexus of Fate a little while ago, and I topped it off by saying that the card was fine, but nothing too special. Now, Pro Tour 25th anniversary was a team tournament, but because each and every deck list was published, we have matchup percentages for all formats, and Turbo Fog featuring Nexus of Fate had the highest win percentage in standard and the second highest win percentage of any archetype across all three formats. So, yeah, I was way off. Tune into coverage of Grand Prix Orlando this weekend to see if the deck sticks, but yeah, I think it's gonna stick. But I got derailed here. The point is that two years of Kaladesh was too long. I think that in order to save standard, they need to go back to the original plan. Set spend a year in standard and then rotate out. Standard is ginormous right now. 1,904 cards, making it the third biggest standard of all time. It would be nice to keep sets in standard for longer, but we've had the system in place for a while now and it's really not working. But maybe you feel differently. Please let us know in the comments or if you're feeling frisky, like and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. See you next time.